Hi, good afternoon, everyone. This is Achi Atienza. I'll be your moderator for the Peering Forum sessions. This will be session one of two, and the next one will be at 4.30. Uh, for our first speaker, it will be Marinho. He will be doing a remote presentation, very timely for the topic, a close look at remote peering. Handing over to Marino. Brad, please set up. OK, hold on. Uh, while we're doing that, some announcement about the peering socials tonight. You may look for Gavin and Raf, who will be around the room earlier to provide info and updates on how you get uh, inside the peering socials later. Hold on. Uh, Marine Ho, are you ready to present? Hello. Um, yes, thank you. Um, can you see my screen? Okay, uh, we'll be setting up your screen and we can see you now, handing it over to you. Go ahead, thank yeah. you. Great. Well, um, uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, and, and thank you for um, inviting me to um, to this event. Unfortunately, you know, I envy you because I'm, I'm not able to be to be there in Bangkok. Right. So, right. Right. Uh, first of all, this is joint work with my former students Fabrício and Pedro, and also with natural operator Leonardo Meta and student Augusto Seri. So this presentation is organized uh, as follows. I'll start with a little bit of context about IXP and remote peering. And then I'll try to answer, uh, to touch three questions. First, how prevalent is remote peering and what are the trends? Second, are there any, are there any routing issues associated with remote peering? And third, how remote and local peering compare in terms of uh, very different attributes? And I'll wrap up with uh, with takeaways. So in terms of context, uh, you know, IXPs are everywhere. Uh, there are almost a thousand IXPs on the planet um, and they're geographically distributed. Some regions have more IXPs than others. And, and in, in, they interconnect over 50,000 autonomous systems. Um, but not all IXPs are alike. Because of centralization, um, we now have some Uber IXPs, some very large IXPs. And because they are so large, they attract many other uh, peers. So the, you know, the fact that they are huge makes them even huger. So taking IX, IXBR SP, which is the uh, largest uh, IXP um, you know, on the planet, um, it, it, uh, the traffic volume has been growing consistently and now it just peaked 21 terabits per second. This IXP is part of a, a larger um, IXP ecosystem in Brazil, uh, which has over 35, or 35, I guess, IXPs at present. And, and overall, it peaked uh, 30, 33 terabits per second. So uh, there's a very large number of IXPs and, and the traffic volume is, is, is very high. Illustrating abstractly IXPs and, and remote peering. So first of all, like uh, we have the traditional peering, which is like a local peering, uh, which in this diagram would be A, A, S, S, A, B, and C, right? Um, let me see if I have a pointer. Uh, this work, no, sorry. So A, B, and C are, are local peering. Uh, and we have the remote peers. Um, so in this diagram, F, G and A will be remote peers, and also D and E. And D and E are remote peers because they access the IXP via a reseller. So resellers have a role. So they provide access to IXPs, um, and the, the IXP to be accessed or, um, can be both, um, or can be either uh, nearby or, or geographically distant, right? Um, like a being uh, nearby, um, um, also, like it's not a barrier to, to use a reseller, and I'll explain why. There are three main remote peering use cases, uh, like actually uh, there'll be more and there's some overlap on, on this. The first one is to fetch content uh, directly 
from a, a remote IXP, uh, which has, uh, which peers with a content provider um, instead of, um, you know, uh, uh, fetching the content uh, uh, otherwise. Um, this is maybe an attempt to improve the quality of connections for clients using latent sensitive applications. So like, um, you know, um, any kind of streaming and then like, um, uh, on say Netflix, but uh, this kind of uh, uh, TV uh, TV boxes, for example. Um, and the third reason is market share, because sometimes uh, like a regional ISP is um, sort of um, uh, cut by, by by a larger ISP, by a larger transit provider, and it, uh, remote peering is a way of uh, fighting back. So consider this scenario. Um, we have a regional ISP, uh, providing uh, transit service to a local ISP and um, and having as customer AS20, uh, you know, a major operator. Then what the major uh, uh, provider sees is that there is an economic opportunity and and cuts off uh, the regional ISP. Um, big, big fish cuts the small fish uh, from the picture. And and the way the regional ISP could fight back is to use remote peering to become more attractive in the BGP sense, having a shorter path. So that way, the regional ISP is bypassing the major operator in a way by using remote peering. So um, the Remote peering resellers, they, they, they claim some benefits. I believe most of them are, are right. Um, the first one is to lower the cost of peering by sharing a port. So like, for example, we have many networks that could be sharing a uh, 10 gigabit port. And because, I mean, 10 gigabit would be too much um, for a single network, but uh, via reseller, uh, they can share the cost and this becomes becomes attractive. Another reason also costs associated is to lower the installation costs by eliminating the need for additional hardware, right? because now you're using the reseller one. Or to make setup easier by completely outsourcing the process. Um, that's what they claim. Um, but mainly, um, like a good reason is when more than one country is involved. So um, remote peering um, reseller may provide international connection while avoiding uh, the several um, uh, barriers, um, such as a bureaucracy of establishing a business overseas, pur purchasing network harder to have a, a physical presence at the remote IXP, renting rec space in a local location facility, and paying for a maintenance team. So all these hurdles, uh, they can be easily easily overcome uh, by means of uh, a remote peering reseller. So this makes a remote peering uh, praised by many. However, uh, there are mixed feelings in the community. Um, you know, uh, some actually are really against uh, the use of remote peering. And there are many reasons. Um, some of them are here. Like uh, to, begin, uh, to begin with, it breaks the premise of keeping the traffic local. Um, so that's fundamental for IXPs in theory. Um, it introduces uh, opaqueness because kind of, um, um, uh, latency is different and so on and reliability I will show but but uh, kind of um, BGP wise they all look the same right all networks look the same uh, but they're not uh, this becomes then becomes harder to monitor and to uh, debug um, and remote peering adds a third party which adds complexity to the picture and finally there, there are some routing issues at, as I will demonstrate and, and and some ones have been demonstrated uh, before, like uh, with Anycast, for example, like uh, remote peering interfering with Anycast. So that was the motivation for our measurement study, our research. Um, it's like um, uh, uh, it's not being and uh, not some exist about it. So um, like uh, we performed this, this this study, and and then we. Um, uh, we have um, uh, published this as, as a, a paper on PUM 2022. And uh, there's another paper which is about to appear on transaction networking on TOM. Uh, it will come out um, very soon. 
So in this measurement study, we evaluate the effects of remote peering using uh, re a representative set of IXPs located on three continents. Um, we compared the growth of uh, RP deployment over 1.5 years on seven IXPs. Um, this is kind of a short period to call it um, longi longitudinal, but anyway, it was um, sufficient to see some trends. We studied the presence of route announcements mispractice, or like uh, actually trombone paths, and we analyzed the reliability of uh, remote peering interfaces and compared with the local ones. In the study, we use a set of vantage points, a set of IXPs as illustrated here, and, as the, and, and multiple data sets, um, particularly PCH, route views, Alicia looking glass. Well, just uh, for reference only, uh, we used uh, for active measurement, uh, we used Scamper at uh, route view BGP collectors. Um, so um, this is not very common, that's uh, infrastructure that, that, that we had, but we needed um, to uh, make our latest measurements. We distinguished two types of remote peering, the geographical ones and the uh, reseller. Right, they are not mutually ex exclusive. So, um, in order to implement uh, geographical remote peering, uh, you may use a reseller, but not necessarily. So, let's see. For a uh, reseller RP, um, we identify the networks by using IXP ground truth data. So, data that we got from uh, from the IXPs. Uh, otherwise, we have no way to to tell that they use um, um, a reseller. Uh, in contrast with the geographical remote peering, uh, we measure latency and we use the same threshold as in the uh, prior work in the, in the literature, which is like 10 milliseconds as, as a threshold to distinguish between local and remote peers. Uh, know that 10 milliseconds is quite a lot in, in, in Euclidean distance. So like kind of could be a thousand kilometers. So in that way, we are um, kind of not identifying some remote peers that are hundreds of kilometers away, maybe. So the first question is, how prevalent is remote peering? Um, there are many ways uh, this could be counted and establish trends. Uh, me members and on interfaces, remote prefi prefixes, address space size, volume of traffic, and so on. But keep in mind when 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 um, comparing, uh, like uh, establishing the trends, uh, the number of prefixes and routes announced may not be directly associated, correlated with the number of remote members. And that's exactly one of the things we established. So we look at the number of members and in interfaces, like I'm assuming they're the same, uh, prefixes and routes. And we found that um, distinguishing between the two types, the seller remote peering and geographical remote peering, for reseller remote peering, um, it was not always possible to determine, you know, the use because we needed ground truth. But we found reseller peering, uh, remote peering um, in Brazil, like the largest IXP, which is IXPDR SP, has 58% of remote or reseller interfaces. Um, uh, Often these, these, these members are nearby, but they're using a reseller to reach the IXP, maybe because of cost. 54%, a very large number also in another XP in Brazil, in, um, in you know, CE, and not so much 20% in links um, in the UK. So in contrast to geographic RP, like more than 25% of AESs in three of the largest IXPs were geographical. So that's also like a substantial number. And the numbers are, 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 are shown uh, below, like 31% in, in, um, in Sao Paulo, in Brazil, 5% uh, in another XP in Brazil, 26% in, in AM, AM6, and 13% and 30, in, in Lynx, for example. So this case of Brazil is puzzling in a way because um, Brazil has a federation of uh, so many IXPs that are geographically scattered in, uh, in, the, in the country. And, and still many, many AESs will use remote peering to connect to this uh, massive IXP in Sao Paulo. 
We also looked at prevalence of remote prefixes. So prefixes can be of three kinds, only like a local, only announced by local members, remote, only announced by remote members, and hybrid, which is like uh, announced by both local and remote members. So uh, remote members announce, we found that the remote peers announce proportionally fewer routes than local peers uh, for both types. And it makes sense. It makes sense because uh, if you're using remote peering, uh, you want to be selective in what prefixes you announce, right? So, um, so we found that uh, like a remote peering has a few routes. So remote peers mainly use their connections to obtain specific content not available at their local XPs. Note that we observed a sizable percentage of hybrid prefixes, like 70% of, uh, of the uh, uh, prefixes that were remote, um, um, they were um, um, remote announced prefixes, also had the route announced by local peers. So like 70% of remote prefixes were hybrid. That's what I mean. So the majority of prefixes that uh, have a remote route are, are the hybrid type. Not, not remote alone. Looking uh, through time, trends to establish like trends for members and prefixes, we noted that the number of members uh, in 2021, so remote peering is becoming more prevalent, right? There is some grow, growth, but uh, the well-established IXPs have grown less. So that's in contrast to uh, prefixes like um, Four IXPs that had a reduction in remote prefixes actually increased the number of remote members in the same period. So, and overall, for most IXPs, the number of remote prefixes decreased from 21 to 22. So, um, actually, the number of members are increasing, remote members increasing, but the number of prefixes is kind of decreasing. And this is put um, demonstrated in numbers for remote interfaces. So, the percentages you see in green mean that there was an increase. For example, IXPVRSP uh, went from 31% 30, 30, of the interfaces, 31.4% to 33.5%. So there was an increase. All, so in all IXPs, there was an increase uh, in, in number of remote members. However, for remote prefixes, the situation is not consistent. In some cases, there was a decrease, large decrease. In some cases, there was a small increase. Right, so all cases decreased or remained similar. So any routing issues with remote peering? Well, yes, potentially. Uh, imagine we have on the left uh, a local IXP and on the right a remote IXP. And we have autonomous system A, uh, which is say a stub that is um, fetching content from ASC, which is a content provider. This is what was intended, um, like to use the local IXP. However, because the, uh, the, 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 the routes are misconfigured, the announcements are misconfigured, um, a more specific prefix is announced to the remote IXP in comparison to the local IXP. So um, ASA fetches content from, uh, from the content provider through the remote, like uh, two ASs in Brazil fetching content through London. That's horrible. So we studied this um, in more depth and to quantify this, this is just for reference. I mean, the slides are available. You can, can have a look or check the paper. And we found, we found that, that there is some substantial number of, um, of cases of trombone paths over two months. So over 480 trombone paths prefixes per day with a peak of over 1,000 in a day. Um, but I must say, that um, there's some major corporate ASs. There are two or three networks that were kind of doing this um, in large numbers. So comparing remote local, uh, remote peering with local uh, peering when, for hybrid prefixes. So with like in terms of path length to see which one is preferred, like the local route or the, or the uh, remote route, we found that the, major the majority of hybrid prefixes had remote routes with an AS path length that was shorter or, or the same length as the local route. That is, the remote route is going to be preferred typically over the local one, which is pretty bad. It shouldn't be like that. And we use route view collectors to confirm the hypothesis that this is actually the case for geographical RP. For reseller RP, the preference is more or less the same 42% for remote 
for remote routes for like which is remote but not so remote perhaps. So comparing the latency for local and remote prefixes, um, this is kind of the ideal situation, and this is the undesirable situation. And you see like the third column, which is the worst case, which is local lower latency, longer AS path length. Uh, that is uh, quite a lot of, quite a lot of cases. So comparing the, we also compared the availability and stability of interfaces. So are BGP sessions in route server from remote assets less available and stable? So uh, we used two months and compared uh, ISPs in, in Brazil and in London. And we found that the, for the uptime between failures, which means um, higher is better and lower is worse. So you see that local ones have a longer period. Uh, between failures. And for the number of state changes over time, uh, uh, now it's the opposite, like the lower is better and the higher is worse. We see again, the purple, which is the local, is better than the, the remote ones. Um, so um, we also measure the latency from, from a more interesting perspective, because before we were uh, measuring the latency from the uh, IXP to the members, and now uh, we, we did something different. We, re, we, we measured the latency from the remote AES um, to the, um, to the uh, remote IXP. And we used the uh, infrastructure of a large remote peering reseller, and we compared the four different transits in an intercontinental remote peering scenario. And what we find is that if multiple connections are available, remote peering provides the best latency for around 20% of prefixes. Second best for additional 20% of prefixes, more or less, a little bit less, I guess. And these results apply for both links and AM6 um, when connecting uh, with Brazil. So it, maybe it's a very specific situation, scenario, uh, cannot be generalized, but nonetheless, it's an important one. When prefixes were available both on, on links and AM6, um, uh, uh, the results were consistent. This is just for reference comparing pairwise uh, transits and, and, and remote peering um, and for like for AM6 and for leads. So the takeaways that's finished, um, the prevalent, what is the prevalence of remote peering? So we sell remote peering, we, find, we find that like up to half or a little bit more than half of the interfaces can be remote, like some, some, some the case of two IXPs uh, like in Brazil. Uh, not so much in others. And we found that geographical remote peering is up to one third of the, of the peers. Um, there's some growth over time in terms of number of remote members, uh, but few remotes, uh, remote routes overall. Um, how about latency? Geographical RP was better than all four transit options in 20% of prefixes and worse than 80%. So what's the BGP choice? Uh, despite having higher latencies, remote routes tend to be BGP preferred in hybrid prefixes, which is bad. And in terms of stability, remote, remote interfaces were uh, shown to be less stable and less available than the local ones. Um, finally, um, we found that, that there were uh, potential trouble paths in, in, in over 37,000 prefixes um, in, in the analyzed IXPs. So that was all for the moment. Oh, thank you very much for listening. Um, and um, I'm ready to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Marinho. Uh, any questions from the audience? Do we also have uh, questions from Zoom? None, uh, none from Zoom. Uh, Marino, I have, I have something. Uh, Maybe part of the consideration is also from the infrastructure perspective is you have to have a, a pop or a presence where you can hand off the connection for remote peering. So some of the ISPs, if they don't have that capability, needs to pass to other providers and they need to consider that cost as well. Again, it's- Yeah, it's, certainly. It's, uh, uh, go ahead. Thanks, yeah. thanks for the question. Yes. Yeah, so, um, like in practice, the financial, uh, the cost considerations are are, are are super important depending on uh, depending what kind of network you are, what kind of business. Um, yes, 
um, I'm not saying remote peering is um, cheap or expensive. Um, um, like, I, I don't know if I'm, I'm answering the question properly. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, there's also a cost comparison. Uh, if there are no questions, thanks again, Marinos. Hope yeah. to see you in person next time. Thank you. Let's give a hand. Yeah, thank you very much. For our next presenter, it will be uh, Internet Landscape from Thailand, our local co-local host as well. Uh, let's give a hand for Nan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ashi. Can you hear me? Yeah. No, no, no. I can just do this. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> yes. Uh, thank you very much, Ashi, for the opportunity. So uh, again, um, I'm Nan from Beacon as you might know, Beacon is a part of the local host. We are Bangkok Neutral Within Asian as well as uh, .th uh, under the TH Nick Foundation. Today, before you start the fruitful peering session, uh, let me give you uh, the overview and broad concept for uh, what is the internet look like in Thailand. Okay. Today I will try to cover uh, just uh, all we up a little bit concept and yeah as well as regulation in the service mobile and broadband and as well as subsea and in Asian DC also. So to let's start. So in from Thailand uh, we have around uh, 500 kilometers square and population about 66 million people. Household is about a half, just 28 million, and we have uh, the capital city is in Bangkok, is around the, the central of Thailand. So we sometimes local people we call Krung Thep Mahanakorn is the the common name for, for for Bangkok. We have six different regions in the north, in the central. For the for the east side, we have northern and east as well, and western and south. So for the international bandwidth is uh, from the last year, we can uh, care for uh, 20, 23 terabit per second, and we have our own official blanket, which is Thai, and similar to the, to the surrounding country, like Laos. And for the internet user and penetration, and as you see, internet penetration in Thailand is quite uh, growing. So right now we have about 20, 28% from the total population in, uh, for the internet user is about uh, 20, 50, 57 million people in terms of the overall population. And, and you can see that uh, is quite increased well after the, the, the pandemic and 2015 also. So on the other hand, as you know, uh, broadband and mobile is, is more popular for, for, for internet user. As you, as you see, the trend is quite uh, increased uh, continuously in uh, comparing to the fixed line, which is uh, the, the, the phone which uh, ha has been declined in, 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 in next year. So for the mobile user, we have about uh, two times of the total of internet users. For the broadband, it's just about uh, 20%. As, you, as I mentioned, the fixed line is, uh, is declining. Yep, let's go to the regulation. I will show you some uh, public study, ISP and mobile and broadband as well. So first, uh, how the regulation in Thailand. In Thailand, uh, we have our own regulation, which called uh, NBTC. So the main function of NBTC is, uh, the first one is to define the nature and type of uh, uh, different uh, category of uh, business telecom type and also consider for, to keep the license for the player, uh, for the operator, do you want to, to operate some, this kind of uh, business about the uh, telecom, which type of license you get, so you, uh, the, the operator need to ask the license from NBTC. And yeah, they also cover not only telecom and also broadcasting as well. Yep, for, for the internet side, uh, they have the major type of uh, different license. Uh, as you can see, there's two aspects for the uh, non-facility limit, 
non facility based and facility based and we define it on each type depends on what uh, what infrastructure you you build on on, on your uh, and service you provide and just for the the foreign company they are limited to to hold only type one license and for the local company you can uh, can can take any license up to the 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 service and infrastructure that you build in Thailand. So thanks to the, the, the fantastic work from IR, IIR Internet Information Research under the Network Technology Lab under NECTEC, so they, they're doing a lot of hard work to publish the, 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 the static from uh, every provider in Thailand. They, uh, they keep update and, and track uh, the connection from each ISP. They try to reach out to uh, every ISP that they know and uh, try to ask for the most updated data from them. So uh, right now they uh, publish um, uh, most updated to, to, to internet maps. So we call, the first one we call uh, Thailand Domestic Internet Exchange Map, which is for the, for the most least for the domestic connection. And the second one is the Thailand International Internet Gateway, which uh, mostly for the uh, IAG site which is the connection that go out uh, from Thailand. Yes, and this information also publicly on, on the NBDC data, which is our regulation also. So as you can see, uh, this is uh, the example of uh, the domestic internet exchange, which is for the, for the domestic part. You can find uh, which provider and which uh, network connect together uh, domestically. So yeah, I, I attached the link in, in the slide so you uh, can find more. They uh, continually update this map uh, monthly. Yeah, and uh, this one is quite a uh, little bit uh, complex. It's hard to uh, read, so you, but, when you, but you can zoom. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of network that uh, Thai network connect to, connecting out to uh, international sites. So you can uh, find more on that one. Yep, and go back uh, for the internet service provider. So as you can see, uh, the, 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 the demand and bandwidth is continuing to grow, uh, especially after the pandemic. So uh, the international size is much higher than the domestic size. And uh, recently, we, even in Thailand, we have many, uh, many over 200 licensed ISP that hold the license, but uh, actually, very few operator that can uh, operate and be the, the actual service provider in Thailand. And recently we, uh, we have seen a lot of uh, company they are uh, merged together. So that's, that means there's a less, less operator in Thailand. So for mobile, so I, I believe that most of mobile operator in Thailand, they are support uh, 4G and 5G as well, which uh, are available. Uh, over the Thailand and will be more uh, mature in the future. So uh, right now we have uh, three major mobile operator, AS, AS, NT Mobile, and True and Detectors merge together. In terms of, of the price, uh, I think in Thailand, uh, we, for, for the world range pie, we are under the, the number of 34, yeah, in terms of pie of gigabit per, gigabyte per, per, per US dollar. And uh, some of these operators also uh, have uh, MVNO play program available in each operator also. Yep. Uh, for the broadband side, we have four major providers, TVBAS and two and other also. And as I have said before, some of operators, they just um, merge together. That means uh, there is a lot less uh, provider. And fiber to the home and for FTTA is the most uh, uh, technology that adopt uh, comparing to the to, to the ADSL adoxis has been declined, and in terms of the price, I think in Thailand is quite uh, is not that high. So so the cost for the megabit per second is uh, a lot less, about uh, zero the zero two in terms of, of of the pricing. So the average bandwidth that every ISP serve for every house is starting from uh, three hundred up to uh, two gigs, yeah. Yes, let's uh, look into all the submarine cable and, and subsea and cable landing station. 
for the world country, we have uh, totally four uh, cable and link station. Uh, so the two is on the east side of Thailand, and another two is on the the south of Thailand. So uh, on the east side, there is not much cable, but for the the south side, there is there is much more cable, which uh, going uh, back and forth from Bangkok, uh, from, from Thailand to other country. So as you can see, uh, the red one is the, is the new cable which is, uh, we'll be developing and uh, we'll be ready for service in this year, hopefully. Uh, I, as I checked, so there are many cables that have been delayed since uh, two years ago, maybe because of the pandemic. So uh, most of cable will be uh, back and, and will be running, hopefully this year. And if uh, this cable is complete in Thailand, we be have up to 13 uh, running cable system. So let's go from the east side first because, uh, yeah. So the, the long leaf cable is uh, AAG cable which can connect Thailand up to, up to US. So I think this is the only cable that Thailand has the connection from, from Thailand to US. And as well as uh, MCT is another cable uh, drop in Rayong that connect uh, Thailand to Malaysia and Cambodia also. ADC is quite the, the, the new one and yeah, we'll be ready in this year that another one that connect from Thailand uh, up to China and also Japan. On the southern side, we have different, uh, two different uh, cable landing station. Uh, let's start from the, the, the left side. Uh, we have uh, CMV3 and 4, which is already, over, which already running. And we have another Indian Express and Miss Cable uh, by NTT. So uh, I think uh, when this cable is ready, we'll be more and more uh, connection from Thailand going to the east side, on the, on the west side, sorry, on the west side. Uh, of the world. So back to on the east side, uh, we currently have uh, two running system and TAS and APG. So uh, there will be upcoming uh, CH2X and SAC2, which will be uh, another one from, from two will be the plus of the consortium. So uh, this is uh, the cable that has connection in both uh, Songkla and Stone, which is both side of, of, of Thailand. So uh, FAE is quite uh, operating, and AAE1 is another long leaf cable that running in Thailand. So as you, to summarize, uh, we have not only the subsea cable that we have connection uh, go out, go in and out from Thailand, and we also have the, the the cross-border connection connect to Myanmar, to Laos, and Cambodia also. Yes, for, uh, for the internet exchange side, right? uh, that's quite a bit uh, long story, but uh, for short, uh, formerly in, in Thailand, we have uh, been dominating by the layer three domestic connection. And, and later on, since uh, I think in Thailand, we quite a bit delay for the ISP uh, development, so we just uh, have uh, the legacy L2 internet exchange around 10 years ago. And currently we have uh, both layer 2 SP and also uh, layer 3 domestic transit uh, service uh, coexisting in Thailand. So as you can see, there are both of uh, service over available in Thailand. The number of operator is about uh, 10 and 11. Yeah, and we will also have an international ISP operator that have operated in Thailand also just uh, M6 and BBAX. Yep, and for the, the data center, as you can see, uh, Bangkok is the, is the capital city of Thailand and has uh, the most of uh, density of connection uh, around Bangkok. That's why many, many of data center, they build the capacity just in Bangkok. But uh, recently, uh, we have seen that since, since the Bangkok is too small, we have limited capacity in terms of electricity and space. So we, we see a lot of uh, data center will be expanding uh, on the east side of Bangkok to, to Sumuvakan area and Chumburi area. So I think this uh, one would be the, the impact of the, 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 the cloud and OTT and CDN service. And yeah, data localization, that would be the, the, the one impact factor also. 
So that is uh, the overview concept of Thailand. So I will leave the room if you have any question, please feel free. Thanks, then. Yes. So, Sawadi. Yeah. Sawadi Kap. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sawadi Kap is in. Kapun Club is in. Thank you. In Thailand. Kapun Club. So we open the floor for questions. It's either a very good presentation. I really like it. I guess. <laughs> oh, there's. there's okay, one. sure. Go ahead, John. Jonathan Brewer um, from New Zealand. Are there many um, companies with the class three infrastructure level license? Uh, five, 10, 20, 100, what would you think? You mean the, the, the operating license? The, the license that allows you to build infrastructure. So class two or class three. How many? How many people build their own fiber? Yeah, actually, I, 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 I can remember the total number, but I, I see a lot of number. So uh, the, the operator will want to build the fiber not only in Bangkok, but also the, the auto province, they need the license to do that also. And I think we require have a, a, a number of the operator that hold that license. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Any question? Thanks again. Yeah. Uh, do we have, oh. Oh, Toyama's coming. Hi, my name is Katsuya Toyama at JPNAP. And I have a question. You're showing the graph of the domestic traffic graph yep. and inter international traffic graph. So the graph shows that the international traffic is still growing more than the domestic graph. I wonder that international traffic is coming from or going into a Singapore or a Hong Kong, that area. And in the future, you have an, uh, many data centers in uh, Bangkok. That means in a lot of an, uh, oh, content, big tech, they have their oh, facilities in the Bangkok. In a case, you foresee the future that the domestic traffic is more than the international traffic. Okay, thank so, you very much, uh, So in terms of the, the, the bandwidth, you have seen the board, domestic and international has been increased. Uh, I think uh, when the OTT, a big player, they come to Thailand, uh, it will be contribute to the domestic, uh, domestic bandwidth, right? But I would say that it's not only the, 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 the every player that can come to Thailand and, and set up the pop and make the local pairing in Thailand. But instead, uh, we also have another player that didn't uh, go to Thailand yet. So that's why the, there are some capacity that they are building to, to, to make the, the connection out in the international also, yeah. Thank you. So I hope that in the future, yeah, this more than the yeah. Yeah, international traffic, domestic traffic is much more. Yes, yeah. you're right, right, right. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yep. Okay. Thanks again. Do, do we have any questions from Zoom? Oh, no questions. I don't have a question, but okay. I really love the map. Maybe next time we need a bigger screen or something to, to, to show the lots of lines next time. But anyway, okay. thank, thank you, Nan. Thank uh, you, Rashi. Give, give thank you. Our next session will be the peering personals. So we have two sets of peering personals for today. Uh, the first one is for ISP, CDNs, OTT, and research. And the second session is for the IX, data center, and transport. So if you submitted your slides, uh, please start to queue up on, the, on your right side. So while we wait for the feeding personal slides to come up, uh, those who submitted, please start queuing up. It's going to be in alphabetical order. And you have uh, one minute, 60 seconds max. But I have to say, this is probably a record-breaking submission for peering personal, so you may have a shorter time. We're gonna have a hard stop by 4 p.m. so you can have a good break. And then we will just continue uh, next. 
Okay, once we have the slides ready. Uh, another announcement for the peering socials later. Uh, it's more for the peering uh, folks. So the presenters will get a ticket and you may uh, approach Gavin or Raf uh, if you are a peering guy. So while we wait for this to come up. Okay, so uh, this is more of a regular run through where it's being personal. It's basically, uh, you know, getting a chance for everyone to introduce their networks, but basically it's the more important one is to get to know the person you need to talk to. Very important. And we have templates. Uh, we have for ISP, IX, DC, and transport. There's a diagram on how to uh, use that. And this is currently our list. Uh, this is the official one, but we had more submissions, as you can see in, in the queue, so uh, we'll probably have more of that. Uh, okay, we start with the ISP, and the first one will be Akamai. Hello, everyone. My name is Cindy. Uh, and I was a port consultant from Akamai Technologies. And the major AS number for Akamai CDN is 20940 and 32787 for DDoS mitigation. And you may already observe we, uh, we acquired Linode in early 2022, and which is remained, renamed as Akamai Connected Cloud. And last year, uh, some customer contracts from StepUp and Luma has been coming onto this platform already. And for traffic profile, uh, for AS20940 is contact, and for DDoS mitigation, it is inbound traffic mostly. The peak throughput has been reached over 250 terabits for CDN and variable for DDoS mitigation based on the DDoS traffic value and the customer needs. So we have, have very open uh, peering policy for CDN, selective for DDoS mitigation, but still welcome for counting us to check. And we are available in more than 200 axes around the world, uh, including TalaX, BKX, M6, Bangkok, BBIX, Thailand, and EC. For 32787, we also connect in more than 40 axes around the world. So for more information, you can visit the Peering DB page to check our coverage. And also very welcome to email us at peering at akamai.com. So thanks for peering with Akamai. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Next is Amazon. Okay, so I'll just read two. Uh, Amazon AS number 16509. Here's the repeating DB entry, so you can check more details. Next, Big Globe. Okay, I'll read it through. Big Globe AS number 2518. Again, the peering entry for more details. Next, Bisnet, Agus. So that means you have more than 60 seconds because we skipped two slides. <laughs> Cindy was over 20 seconds. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Agus from Bisnet, is uh, one of the ISP from Indonesia. So our ISN is uh, 17451. So traffic profile is about uh, eyeball, and uh, traffic volume is about uh, 500G until 1 terabbps. Our polling policy is uh, open. Uh, you can peer with us is on the major internet exchange in, in Indonesia and also we are located in HIAEC, MEGAEC and Equinic Exchange in Singapore. So you can contact uh, to our NOC at businessnetworks.com uh, or to agus underscore arianto at businessnetwork.com. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Wow, 40 seconds. <laughs> okay, I think this is a game. Uh, converge? Time starts now. Walking time counts. <laughs> Just kidding. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. I'm Rain Bonyal. 
So for converge, our AS number is 17639, traffic profile, eyeballs, our traffic volume is 7 terabits per second, peering policy is open, peering locations in Asia, we have Hong Kong, Singapore, Japan, and the Philippines. And in the U.S., we are on, on the, uh, Los Angeles. And we have also remote peering in EU, M6, D6, Lynx, and LIX. You can contact us also in, in our information in peering DB. And you can also approach us during the event until Friday. And you can contact us in our email peering at conversehd.com. Thank you. Thank you, Rain. Next is Digital Edge. Thank you, sir. Uh, no, you can use the podium. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Raphael from Digital Edge, from, uh, if you didn't know me from before. Uh, so we have two ASNs, one in Korea, one in Indonesia. Uh, under Indonet, uh, those are our details. Thank you very much. That's fast. Uh, you need to beat the uh, 15 seconds. <laughs> Dito, so you have one minute and 45 seconds. <laughs> Take it slow. Hi everyone, I'm Kim Junaide from Dito Telecommunity, the third operator, mobile operator in the Philippines. So we are ASN 139831, traffic profile, eyeballs. Our traffic volume is more than 600 gig. We're open, uh, peering policy open, and we're uh, we have peering locations, of course, in the Philippines, Hong Kong, and Singapore. So for more information, you can check us, our entry in peering DB. And if you want to peer with us, you can contact me or you can send an email through peering at dito.ph. Thanks, bro. So you are, you're good. Below one minute. Next is Equinix. Hello, everyone. Abhishek here from Equinix. So our uh, ISP pro 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 our ISP portfolio is called like Equinix Internet Access, and we are running on AS15830 globally. Our traffic volume is around 500 GB globally, and uh, traffic policy is mostly open. Uh, you can find more detail from the peering DB for our uh, interconnection portfolio, and also we have our booth outside and our interconnection team out there. So please reach out to them for the more detail on this profile. Thank you. Thanks, Abhishek. G Core. Hi, everybody. We are AS199524, and our traffic profile is outbound heavy. We have a selective peering policy and our traffic volume is over 20 terabits per second. Our peering locations are global, and uh, we currently have over 160 points of presence globally with over 11,000 uh, peering partners. Um, if you want to peer with us, you can our, our contact is peering at gcore.com, or you could get through us through uh, PeeringDB. And while I'm still here, uh, you could reach out to me and we can uh, make arrangements to peer. Happy peering. Thank you. Next up is Globe Telecom. Okay, hold on. Hi, I'm Achia Chensa, ace number 4775. We have open peering policy. All the details at peering DB. Five seconds. Uh, next, uh, Hersa Cloud. Uh, selfie later. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read to Hersa AS140443. Details will be in the peering DB entry. Okay. Uh, home knock.
Okay, hello everyone. My name is Musashi from Homelock, AS59105. Homelock is an experimental network for research education in Japan. We provide IP transit to other educational networks. <laughs> uh, our traffic profile is educational or research. Our traffic volume is almost one gbps. And our building policy is strictly, but basically it's open. We have three locations enables uh, pairing with you such, such as JPX Tokyo, JPX Osaka, and Equinix Tokyo, but they are only in Japan. Uh, if you would like to know more detail about us, you can refer to our pairing DB page or our official website. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Yuta-san. That was 50 seconds. <laughs> okay, International Gateway. Okay, I'll, I'll read through. So AS number is 137557, and they also have a peering DB entry, so please check it out. ITNE. Hello, everyone. My name is Vanessa from ITNE. Our AS number, ASN number is 7131. Uh, traffic profiles mostly open. Our traffic volume is roughly around 60 gigs. Uh, pairing policy, we are selective pairing. Uh, pairing public pairing is uh, NE2S, BBIX Tokyo, and uh, Mirex. Uh, pairing locations, we are uh, currently with Crown Castle in LA, Coruscant LA2, Equinex TYA Tokyo, ITNI Guam, ITNI Saipan, RT, RTI Guam, and Tata Communications. Uh, we do have an entry on pairing DB for more information, and you can contact us at pairing at it.net. Thank, Thank you. you. Next is IPTP. Okay, I'm going to read you. Uh, okay, you can read the AS numbers, and this will be published anyway, so thank you. Next. Uh, Eric's. Can you beat five seconds? Just kidding. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, I'm I uh, from IRIX. Uh, our AS number is one three one three three zero. Traffic is balanced, and uh, we are open for peering for everyone. And our locations are Singapore, Hong Kong. Uh, and uh, of course, Kuching. Irix is based in Kuching, Sarawak, Malaysia. Yeah. For more info, you can visit our peering DB, and you can contact me anytime if you want to peer with us. Thank you. Happy peering. Thank you, Dean. KCAT. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Joel representing KCAT. We're a small cable TV operator operating in Western Visayas in the Philippines. Uh, AS number 137404. Traffic profiles mostly eyeballs. Traffic volume of 10 Gbps. Pairing policies open. Uh, we're located currently in Page Open IX and Get a Fix Manila. We can pair with you there. Our current data centers are in uh, Vitro Makati and soon in Digital Edge Nara 1. Our peering DB entry is there, and if you want to contact me to peer, that's my email address because I can't afford a peering manager. Thank you, Joel. LGU Plus. Everyone, this is uh, Gloria from LG um, U Plus. Actually, I'm on behalf of um, some of our engineers because they couldn't attend, so I'm doing the peering personals on behalf of them. Uh, we have our main AS3786. Uh, we're based in Korea, but we do have some peering locations outside, uh, such as US or um, in Frankfurt, Germany. Uh, we're mostly located in the Asian region. Um, we're also in Tokyo, Osaka, and the uh, main peering location in Korea. 
Um, you can find more details in, through our peering DB for more information. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Meta. Uh, boy band. <laughs> We're very happy to present the full APAC team here. Um, Mark, William, and the newest edition, uh, Alex. Slish in his third week. <laughs> yeah. um, and of course, uh, we are Meta, uh, previously formerly known as Facebook, uh, 32934. And uh, for peering policy, refer to our peering policies URL here. And of course, for all the locations refer to peering DB. Uh, you can contact us or for regarding peering PNI and also for caches uh, over the links that is provided here. And also for caches, you can also contact us, the team when you meet us to see over here in these events. Thank you. We time Thank to you. spare. Time to spare for the boy band. Next will be Microsoft. Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. I am Harish Sarmalkar from Microsoft. Uh, that's appearing ASN. Uh, traffic volumes uh, in more than DBPS, and appearing policy is selective. Uh, and uh, we are present in more than uh, we are covering almost uh, you know all the pops in the APAC region. And that's appearing policy. You can get more uh, details in it, and you can. <laughs> oh, stay. I'm sorry. Well, uh, you can get more info regarding us on the peering DB. And on top of that, I would like to also uh, let you know that we also offer Microsoft caching, caching solution. Uh, uh, you can contact us uh, to get more info on it. We have Andy who has flown in from US uh, to give more information on it. Thank you so much. Have a nice rest of the day. Thanks, Arish. Just in time. Mobicom? Hello everyone, uh, we are Mobicom from Mongolia, uh, our ASIN is 55805 and traffic profile is eyeball and uh, traffic volume is almost 100 and peering policy is open and peering location uh, in Mongolia MISPAX and Hong Kong HKX, uh, Japan GPIX and Germany uh, Dutchland Exchange and remote peering in Singapore uh, Dutchland Exchange New York and Moscow Exchange. So if you want to peer with us, uh, contact me and my colleague, and also you can uh, email to peering.mobcom.mn. Thank you. Thank you, man. Next is Emma. Hi, hello everyone. I'm Kazuhiro Kitamura from JPRS. Uh, we are Mroot DNS server uh, operated by a wide project and the JPRS. Our S number is uh, 7500 and traffic volume is uh, not so much and we have open policy and we are now expanding appearing locations. Uh, so there are many locations. So if you have find your countries in here, please peer and contact me, please. Thank you. Thanks again. National Telecom. So the cup. Hi, I'm Jackie Tatarit from NT National Telecom in Thailand. Our instance number is AS46651. Uh, topic profile is Balan. Our topic volume is 750 gigabit per second. Our policy is open. Mm -hmm. You can peer uh, ring location as Equinix SG, Equinix Hong Kong, BBX Hong Kong, BBX SG, and BBX Tokyo. In Japan, in Japan, Hong Kong X, M6, D6, Linux, and LX. Cosine E2. Uh, you can contact me as peering team, peering at cat dot 
the, the TS. Thank you. Thanks again. Netflix. Hello, everyone. Hope you're enjoying. Um, I'm Nayong from Netflix. You can also communicate. Either way works. Um, our ASN uh, 2906 traffic profile contents, uh, peering policy open. So if you uh, peering location worldwide, so please uh, refer to the peering DB. Um, and if you are interested in peering with us or our cache server OCA, uh, please contact to us through the uh, either our website or peering at netflix.com and also the team here listed here Ian, uh, Nihid, myself and Jocelyn are attending a pre-code in person this time so please reach out to us and say hello thank you thanks Nikki 58 seconds yeah sorry uh, OVH cloud thanks man Yes, the status representing OVH Cloud. So we are a cloud provider operating in three different continents, Europe, North America, and APAC. And APAC specifically, we are present in Singapore, Mumbai, and Sydney. And peering policy is open. And for details, you can visit our peering DB. So we prefer to have a, a private peering uh, with uh, 100 gig PNI start or we can do a connected uh, bilateral session over uh, IXPs. And also we are looking to expand to other regions as part of deploying edge services as part of local zones. So if you want to discuss, maybe you can discuss directly. Thank you. Thanks again, man. ECH. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Dibya, and I'm with uh, Packet Clearing House. We are AS42, AS3856. We do a lot of uh, DNS any cost using AS42 and operate a uh, uh, routing data collection network using AS3856. We peer with open peering policy, and we are at around 300 IXPs worldwide. Our peering DB entries are there. And if you'd like to arrange a peering with us or know more things about uh, the kind of work we do, then we would be really interested to talk to you. Please feel free to find us here, out us here. And uh, we have like ones of Fox here. You can just come and talk to us directly. Thank you. Thanks, Timia. Yeah. Uh, Radius. Uh, Radius Telecom, AS number 55821, uh, peering DB entry is here. They have an open peering policy. Thank you. RATN. Okay, I'm going to read. AS number 9002, uh, peering DB entry is also on the screen. Rice. Hey everyone, I'm Fraser from RISE. Uh, so we're a Philippines-based ISP. Uh, we're everywhere, obviously, in the Philippines uh, as well. Singapore, Hong Kong, Tokyo, Guam, if you want to appear there, um, as well as US West Coast. Um, details there, um, feel free to reach out. Thanks. Thanks, mate. Thank you, Philip. I'm going to time. I'm breaking Achi's queuing system. Sorry. Um, yeah, so one of my many hats, uh, right views. Um, I think one or two of you might have heard of it. It's been mentioned quite a bit yesterday and today. AS6447, we're at several places around the world, 40 plus IXs. Um, as I was mentioning, Peering Asia last November, we are looking for more places. We're also hiring a new person uh, to join Hans and myself. 
So we're quite excited about that and be able to expand out to more places. But if you're an IX with a lot of peers, we are interested in hearing from you. If you're at an IX that we are at and you've got a lot of routes to share or interesting and different and novel routes to share, uh, people like Jeff and Doug will be delighted to get your BGP feed because they can do more interesting research about what's going on in the internet. Thank you all. Thanks, Philip. Asalti Global. Okay, uh, AS number 45489, uh, Selective Peering Policy. All the details are in their peering DB entry. SoftBank. Hello everyone. My name is Kichi from SoftBank and our AS number is 17676 and traffic profile is eyeballs and we are one of the biggest ISP in Japan and traffic problem is non-disclosure and pairing policy is selective but please feel free to talk to us and pairing location I wrote a lot but please check pairing DB and I'm not sure wearing this T-shirt after this pairing personal, but please find us to say hello. Thank you. Thank you. Sunny Vision. Hello, everyone. I'm Andrew from Sunny Vision. We are data center in Hong Kong. Um, we have our internet service and the AS number is 972 line and we also operate HKIX satellite site, HKIX V in Mega 2 and HKIX VB in Mega I. And we are here to share some updates that we just launched a new product, Mega Edge. Mega Edge is a fully managed service that facilitates the interconnection with ISP, telco and the cloud service provider. Please feel free to contact us. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Tom Cable. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Norihito Yasutaka. Uh, Tama Cable Network is a uh, Tokyo Westside uh, local uh, cable station company. Uh, its number is 131958. Uh, traffic volume is uh, 33 uh, gigabps. Link Polish opens. It's a bearing uh, DB entry. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Talent. Hello, everyone. My name is Amin. Uh, I'm from Tallinn. Our ICE number is 7713. Uh, we carry on uh, Indonesian eyeball. Uh, in terms of volume, currently Indonesia is the fourth rank in the world uh, in terms of internet uh, user. So we are very happy if we can make uh, interconnection worldwide. You can see our print location in Indonesia, USA, Europe, uh, Singapore, and Hong Kong. Please do not hesitate to contact us in uh, peering at and happy peering. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Amin. Tencent. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Patrick Lee, uh, the primary peering coordinator from Tencent Global. Uh, actually, we have two AS number, one for cloud, one for CDN. So actually, you can find all the details in peering DB. And, uh, uh, our peering policy is open. Uh, we have public peering internet exchange, and also we have PNI of private uh, peering. Also, we are doing caching with ISPs as well. Um, yeah, our, uh, I'll put the information is here. Uh, you can then contact me directly, and also you can scan the QR code, and we should direct you to the peering DB for all the details. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Patrick. <laughs> Tell us, Okay, Telstra AS number is 4637, Selective Peering Policy, uh, Peering DB Entry is on the screen. University of Guam.
Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ronald Marfega. Um, I'm from the University of Guam, AS number 395400. We have education and research traffic, uh, and we are open to peer. Um, on all the information is right there. We have peering locations over at Merix, which is located in our data center, and, our, and over at Gorex. Uh, those are our two major, uh, major peering locations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, VNPT. Uh, hello, everyone. It's, my name is uh, Dick from VNBT. I'm in charge for the interconnections uh, manager. So uh, our traffic profile is uh, heavily inbound is the eyeball, and traffic volume now is more than 7T. Uh, so the peering policy now is open, and we are uh, present in Asia, which, uh, in Hong Kong, Singapore, and Japan. And the EU is uh, in some uh, major IH, like the kick uh, I'm sick links. Uh, net notes. And in the US, we're doing a remote peering with some guy like uh, Equinic and, and NE2. So you can find uh, more about VNPT policy in the peering DB. And uh, the contact information to do the peer is contact direct by myself and my peering team as peering at vnpt.vn. Thank you. Thanks, Luke. Uh, Bokus. Howdy, I'm Phil from Vocus Australia. Uh, we have a presence um, listed on there, fairly open peering policy. If you want to reach out, shoot me an email. Oh, thanks. Uh, 18 seconds. No, I got five seconds. <laughs> Wes Fardo. Hello everyone, I'm Wesley. I am a, an internet service provider out of uh, Roja City and Capiz. It's a small island in the Philippines, uh, somewhere in Visayas. Okay, so my AS number is 138970. My traffic profile is eyeballs at the traffic volume of about 4.5 gigs. So I'm even smaller than Joel. So like him, I cannot afford a peering manager. So please shoot me an email if you like to, would like to peer. Happy peering, everyone. Thank you. Uh, Zen Layer. Hey, hi, uh, this is Changwa from Zen Layer. So we have two S number, uh, 21859 and 4229. Uh, we host uh, traffic like uh, gaming as well as uh, short video traffic. And we have multiple tens of, ten T's of the traffic in our network. Our peering policy is selective. And in fact, in most of the region, we are quite open for it. And we are present globally, uh, mainly in the APEC region. And you can find us from the peering DB entry, uh, or feel free to contact us via capacity planning dash IP at sandlayer.com. Thank you and happy peering. Thank you again. Uh, we're going to go back uh, to some of the slides. So can we jump to uh, AWS and IPTP? Can you go forward? Uh, this is a special moment for them, so <laughs> let's give them a hand. Hold on. Um, hello, my name is Martin. I work at AWS. Our ASIN number is 16509. Uh, we recently opened our peering portal, which is for our existing peers. So if you're new and you'd like to set up a new peering session, please reach out to us directly. Thank you. Uh, IPTP. 
Hold on. We're just going to jump to your slide. Hello, everyone. Pardon me if I missed my, sli my slide just now. So here we go. Uh, I'm Kim from IPTB Networks. Uh, I'm from Vietnam, uh, but we do uh, network globally. So we have a few AS number for the different region, uh, but our global AS number is a 41095, uh, restrictive peering, but we have the rest is, uh, is uh, open for peering. So please uh, just uh, email to us if, if any uh, opportunity that we can establish peering in any location that we are present. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ms. Kim. Uh, can we go to RETN? Sam? Okay, thank you. So this is Sam from RETN. So we have uh, balanced traffic profiles. Um, recently, we have uh, more than 10 terabits of traffic. So um, our peering policy is selective. So um, please uh, have a look of our peering policy. And if, if you want, we can peer with, uh, in multiple locations, like in Asia, Europe, and also in United States. So um, feel free to contact us uh, through email. So we will have a look and see and have some peering. So thank you. Thanks, Sam. That's the end of the session for peering uh, forum number one. Uh, we will have another batch of peering personals uh, in the next session. Please be back here by 4.30. Uh, we will also have other speakers uh, in that session as well. An additional announcement for the peering socials, you may look for Raf and, and Gavin for the tickets. Uh, it's gonna be uh, provided later. But the speakers will have uh, tickets on their own when they queue up uh, for the session later. Thanks again and see you.